God is a great God. He deserves a great praise. With hands lifted up and a mouth filled with praise. With a heart thanksgiving.
but truly this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, yes. Amen. And I shall, I said, and I shall rejoice. And the pastor, why did you put emphasis on that shell? Because every now and then I have to tell myself, I got to forget about what happened yesterday. I got to forget about how I'm feeling with my physical body. God praise for him. We honor God today for who is certainly the head of our life. Thank God for assisting Pastor White today. Amen. Thank God for Ella Quick. Amen. And Ella Rogers today. Amen. To our precious mothers. Precious mothers and our missionaries today. Thank God for our deacon brothers on today. Amen. Looking good today. God bless you. Amen. Brother Cleveland. Amen. It's good to see you. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Good to see you there. Amen. And to our visitors on today. Amen. So happy for our Come on, let's thank God for our visitors. Ready to the way. Amen. Somebody's talking up your church. Amen. Amen. God bless our mothers. Good to see you, Mother Williams. Amen. And all our mothers today. Amen. My soul gets heavy. Amen. When I see how the Lord is blessing and touching our mothers, enabling them, amen, to come into the house of the Lord. Amen. Can I just say to all of God's people that are here today, is that all right? Amen. amen. I'm so glad to see the Greater New Bible Way Saints on this, amen, as Ella White stated, the second Sunday, amen, of this year. Amen. God has been good to us, Greater New Bible Way. Amen. God has been so kind to us, so merciful to us. Amen. I dare not forget about what the Lord has done and continue to do. Amen. In our lives. Again, I want to say a special thank you to, amen, to the members of this great church for how you, once again, rolled your sleeves up. Amen. Gave your best foot forward. Amen. And making sure that we had another great and successful planning conference, amen, for 2019. Come on, give yourselves a hand for that. Amen. We work together, amen, to make it great, amen. It takes teamwork to make the dream work. I'll say that again. It takes teamwork to make the dream work, amen, amen. And because of you, you gave, amen. Those of you that serve, amen, in the kitchen, amen. Those of you that ushered on the door, amen. Those of you that marshal outside. Yes, sir. yes, Deacon Jackson, we thank God for you and even the mule, amen. Thank God for the mule, amen, that helped us on the parking lot. Somebody looking at me funny, Pastor, I didn't see no mule out there. Amen. That's what I thought the first time. Amen. I heard that that was a mule. Deacon Jackson rode the mule around the church. Amen. To, amen. Provide security for the saints of God. Amen. We thank God. Amen. And to the choir that joined in. Amen. Just to all, even to the, amen, the cleaning crew. Amen. That kept our church smelling and looking so fresh. Can we thank God for the cleaning crew? Amen. It takes all of us. Amen. I was sound. I, I haven't said I was sound, man. Amen. I was on Deacon Franklin. Amen. The sound was off the chain, y'all. Amen. You know when it sounds good, it moves you. Amen. So we, we, we thank God even for the sound, man. Amen. To all of God's people. Listen, that was promotion. Amen. You seen her direct? Amen. I'm like that little quick on all occasions. You seen her direct jurisdiction or you seen her direct in the district. Amen. State meetings alike. Amen. Stand sister Hyde. Amen. I want to introduce you all to Amen. She was promoted to the assistant Miss Sunshine Band of the second and three Isn't the Lord 
Lord good? Yeah. Isn't the Lord good? Yeah. Amen. I thank God for how you're cheering her on. Amen. Because listen, when one of us go up, how many of us go up? All of us go up. Amen. We're in this thing together, you all. Amen. When one looks good, we all look good. Amen. So I'm so happy. Amen. And thankful how the Lord is continuing to bless. Amen. Sister Hydra. Amen. We know that she has a great gift. Amen. We know a great new Bible way. But now the state knows all about her and the gift. Amen. That she possessed. Amen. Because of the Lord. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. I'm just a happy pastor this morning. Amen. Amen. I was somewhat tired on yesterday, but tell somebody I recuperated already. Amen. Amen. I'm ready to run for Jesus. Hey, glory to God. Good God, man. I felt that. I'm ready to run on a little while longer. Listen, again, I want to thank you, the Greater New Bible Week members, how you supported the Rogers family. Amen. And the loss, amen, of our dearly beloved uncle. Amen. The deacon Sylvester Rogers. Thank you so much, Greater New Bible Way. Many of you stepped up, you brought food, you served again. Amen. You never cease, amen, to continue to be kind and show love to your church, to your pastor, amen, and to the family. Amen. I want to express a heartfelt appreciation to each and every one of you once again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. We ask that you continue prayers for the family. Amen. Pray for his daughter. Pray for his son. Pray for his siblings. Amen. They need your prayers. Amen. That they will continue to look to the hills from which cometh our help. Amen. Because we know that all of our help comes from the Lord. How many of you are ready for a word from the Lord today? How many of you need a word from the Lord today? Tell somebody, tell them I need a word today. I need a word today. You look good to me, but I, I, I didn't come to see what you have on today. Will you put your hands together and receive our best of the day? God, I've been in our state name town, local Sunday school, superintendent. Amen. The elder, thank you, Steve Rogers. Come on, let's thank God for him. Tell him yes, Lord. Come on, tell him yes, Lord. Yes to your word, Lord. Even before the word comes, yes to your word, Lord. Even before something is even told to you, yes, Lord, God. Father God, Lord, we pray, God, right now that you would come into this room, God. Oh, God, and come into this vessel, God. Use me right now, God. God, give me an anointing, God, that not only makes preaching easy, God, but makes living for you better, God. Makes living for you possible, God. Makes this walk, God, just a little sweeter, God. Oh, God, Lord, it exposes the enemy. Uh-huh. And it reveals to us, God, the truth, the strength, God, that lies within us, oh, God. Oh, God, Lord, for you said the truth will make us free, God. And, God, we need to be free, God. Loose us right now. Loose right now. Satan, loose your hope, and God, loose us right now. I said, Satan, loose your hope, and God, loose right now. This is a brand new year, and, God, we want to experience freedom in you. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, let us all say thank God. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. Come on, uh, if you would, turn to Luke chapter 17, verse 1. While you're doing that, I honor our pastor. Amen. Can you give him a good, God bless you, a good praise, a good hand clap? Come on, I said our pastor. Can you give him a praise? Our First Lady and Mother, amen. First Lady Emeritus, amen. We honor her, amen. We honor so many, all of God's people, amen. Pastor White, amen. To everybody that's in this house, amen. From the front pew to the, to the back door. And if somebody's standing outside, amen, that's here, amen, we honor them too. Man, truly, I dare not 
overlook, amen, my wife and my family, amen. Would you give them a good hand, praise? Amen. I want my children and my wife to stand since she's already up and we got one trying to cut up. I want all you all to stand. Stand, Brandon, Braylon, Roderick, and Zayana. Now, Jalen. Jalen. Okay. Stop that. Shh. It's all right. All right. Amen. You all may be seated. Amen. I thank my wife, amen, for just hanging on in there. Amen. You don't even know what type of soldier she is. Amen. You don't even know the strength that she has in her. Oh, some of you may, may have an idea, but you don't really understand what it takes to do what we're doing. See, all you know is what you've heard. But you don't know the walk. You don't know the story. If it looks easy, it's because God has graced us to make it look easy. If it looks like we're flourishing, it's only because God has done that. But you still don't know the work that goes in, too. Amen, amen. Amen, I won't dwell on that. That's not what I'm up here about. Luke chapter 17, verse 1. I got one verse for you reading. Would you please stand? Since we're just reading one verse, you'll stand up. Amen. You'll lose one-eighth of a piece of a pound. Amen. <laughs> verse 1 reads, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. Yes. But woe unto him through whom they come. Can we read that again? Yes. Amen. Amen. Luke yes. chapter 17. Come on, let's read it together. Verse 1. Then said he unto it is impossible but woe unto him through whom they come. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. The Bible speaks of wars and rumors of wars in the last days which in large part is the result of man's disobedience to God's holy word. War is defined, one definition says, war is a state of armed conflict between different nations or different groups within a nation or state characterized by extreme violence, by aggression, by destruction, amen, destruction of people and destruction of the land, and mortality. Merriam-Webster uh, phrases it like this. It says that war is a state of unusually open and declared, excuse me, war is a state of usually open and declared armed hostile conflict between states or nations. War is also a sustained campaign against an undesirable situation or activity. So when war is declared, it is then a clear indication that no matter when or where we next meet, let me say it like this, it's on. Amen, amen. I want to honor our musicians, our pastor. He didn't say them. I was just asking. I was just waiting for something he didn't get. He got everything else, amen. He talked about the family, amen. Truly, this has been a... A, a trying probably last two, three weeks, amen, even during the Christmas amen. break, amen. amen, as things were happening and transpiring. But I thank God, amen, for a family that prays together and, and really works uh, together will stay together, I hope, amen, yes. amen, amen. And as Pastor said, you know, he alluded to it without really going into it, but please pray for our family. Amen. Would you do that? Amen. Would you just call the Rogers family? You don't have to call my name, but I'm talking about anybody with our last name. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. There are eight main causes of war. One, one author um, gave eight causes of war. I'm sure you can find others or it may be a little different, but from one through eight, they are economic gain, territorial gain, religion, Nationalism, revenge, civil war, revolutionary war, defensive war. Anyway, as a result of being a soldier of war, albeit voluntary or drafted, because some of us go sign up, some of us are just brought into it, right? There are certain inherent dangers of war to be expected, such as injury. Mm -hmm. You've been in a war, you're going to get injured, are you not? 
incapacitation or loss of a limb. Damage to sensory organs. That's your sight. That's your hearing. That's your smell. Amen. Your taste. Amen. Brain damage. Nerve damage. And even death. These possibilities are expected because you're fighting an enemy. Somebody say an enemy. That is on the offensive. This enemy, he's also on the attack. Looking to invade and to destroy you. The Bible says that our enemy, the devil, our enemy, uh, he comes but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He's not there for your good time. He's not there to be a play pretty. Oh, you may be shining in the streets now, but just know, he's still your enemy. He don't make friends. That's the problem. Some of us are choosing our friends the wrong way. Amen. So he's looking to invade and destroy you. So as a good soldier, you never want to what? Turn your back on the enemy. Any good soldier, amen, any person with good sense, if you're about to be in a fight, you're not about to turn your back. I'm not going to be before you long. We've had a long week. We've had, we got other things going on today. Amen. And my wife told me that uh, if I take too long, she's going to put up two fingers because she still has to go to work tonight. She still got another shift tomorrow night. Now, that, in the, don't let nothing else stop. All these 20 appointments that we do, about 10 or 15 a week, uh, it, outside of our job. See, I'm not going to get into all that. But I'm, I'm just telling you, it's work going on. But what do you do when you receive an attack from an enemy that does not fight, that, that is attacking you, a man may have even had the nerve to pull up and park on the outside of the parking lot. Oh had the nerve to walk in and take a seat on your row. Sing along beside you, worship beside you. Lift up their very hands, amen. Some of them with the vampire shaped claws, you seen them. Uh-huh, with Rolex watches on, uh-huh. Uh-huh, same skin color, uh-huh, no every song that you know. Uh-huh, join the church that you joined, amen. What do you do when you receive an attack from that type of a person? How deep is the hurt when the very brother you reached out to help last month lashes out to you before service? And then again after service, amen. What about those that you are expecting to teach you? To train you, amen, to lead you, act as though they can barely tolerate you. Since this is installation service tonight, I also wanted to involve some of our leaders, amen, here. What we're dealing with in these offenses, I want you all to help me with my title. It says, Beware. beware. Come on, come on, I need everybody to open your mouth. Please help me out. Say, Beware, beware. of friendly fire. Yeah, friendly fire is a term that the military gave when, amen, when a person dies due to a mistake caused by your own soldiers, right? Right, right. Because the military has advanced so much and technology is advancing faster than the training is advancing. So what's happening is you have people who no longer, amen, need to uh, relay a message the old way, amen, but they can call in their position and tell them where the enemy is, and, and then they'll send, send in, now they got drones even, and they'll send those drones, and they'll send, they'll call in the, fi the fighters to come in and drop bombs, but what they were finding is if they radioed an attack, or if they were getting ready to put a, put a location on a computer if, if something went down and they need to change the battery. Well, when it came back up and they were marking, they were mismarking their location. Yeah. Uh -huh. And instead of putting where the enemy was, it said, drop the bomb right here on us. And so what is happening is you got people, amen, that are in the church that are serving in positions that are operating, amen, in the pews, and they have been offended. That's what Paul, that's what, amen, that's what this word is saying, amen. I found it amazing, amen, that he addressed 
the disciples. There are many times he addressed the crowd, amen, but he addressed the disciples, amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. The Bible speaks, amen. So, so amen. As we go through these different things, amen, God gave us a remedy that you don't have to just solely exist in an offended state. Amen, amen. It says, it were better for him that a millstone, this is verse 2 of the 17th chapter, that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea, that he should offend one of these, my, these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. What is rebuke? What is rebuke? Rebuke is a strong disapproval, amen. It's a strong disapproval, amen, of what, amen, has been done or said, amen. Amen. It's strong criticism. Now you will say, now that's, that's an offense right there. No. Rebuke is necessary. Offense is done out of sin. Rebuke is done out of righteousness. Amen, amen. And not only that, but then after you after you rebuke him, it says, if he trespass against you seven times seven, amen, in a day, amen, turn again to him, say, and then he turn again and say, I repent, it's also our job to forgive. So it's not just an excuse for you to walk around, amen, being offended, being hurt, amen, lashing out, amen, 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 if they come to you and ask for forgiveness, amen, amen, because you, it says thou shalt forgive him, that means you immediately stop feeling angry, you lose the resentfulness, you pardon them, you exonerate them, amen. But, Pastor, I found out that when people have been offended, and the, sanctu the sanctuary no longer looks like a place of worship. The sanctuary begins to look more like a battlefield. Where people come in, amen, with all their armor on, with all their guards up, amen. Amen. The sanctuary no longer looks like a battlefield, amen. It looks more like a battlefield than a place of breakthrough. Amen. Instead of feeling free to praise, amen, they're coming in, laying down with armor. I got my guards up. Now, how are you going to praise God with your guard up? Where is the spirit going to penetrate to? And it's not, you know what? Let me relieve you. It's really not all your fault either. That's why the Bible says that there's a twofold responsibility. Somebody got to go have enough, amen, God in them to say, I'm sorry. If you're going to be a leader in 2019 in this church, you ought to be able to say, I'm sorry, before you try to give orders. You ought to be able to say, forgive me. I made a mistake. Just because pastor appointed me as a leader don't mean I already know everything. Don't mean I'm perfectly walking with God. And you know what? Let me relieve you, leaders. God don't require that you be perfect. He required that your heart be right. He required that you seek after him, that you seek him daily. That's why we repent daily. Listen, repenting is gold with God. And it's power with God. It's power with man. Amen, amen. It says beyond uh, the death and devastation caused by friendly fire. Amen. This is the result of friendly fire out on the war zone. It ripples through the ranks. So once you have found that one of your comrades was killed by another comrade, they said it sends ripples through the ranks, making those left behind uh, 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 less aggressive. Now we can't complete our mission, Elder White. Now the goals that we have set, those goals are dead. Now the things, now forget trying to win souls. Man, I'm just trying to barely hang on myself. How I'm going to tell somebody about God. I don't even like half these people. But I'm still kind. It makes people more likely to forfeit the initiative. I don't care what pastor's goal is. I don't care what, amen, I had said I was going to do. That's out now. Not going to give that money that I promised. Not going to be a service tonight. Could be, but I'm not. It makes them leery of fighting at night. I'm not going to inconvenience myself. Or bad weather or raising doubt in the minds 
of the commanders involved. Wow. And then the pastor saying, I'm preaching. God, I'm chasing after you. Lord, I'm saying what you want me to say, but what's going on in here? There are some times when speaking in tongues ain't going to get it. There are some times when even pastor just preaching over this pulpit ain't going to get it. Sometimes you need to pull each other to the side and talk plain, simple English and say, look, you hurt me last time I was at church. I'm tired of coming in here trying to get a shout together, trying to get a dance together, and then uh, 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 I'm, I, I got to look at you too. And you keep walking past me acting like you haven't done nothing. You know what you've done. Sometimes we have to just speak plain, simple English. Let me tell you something. When people are coming in here off the streets, and we thank God, amen, that he sends people in, but our mission mainly is to go out and get them. I know we pray for God to send them in, but he told us to go out and compel me. That was the Great Commission. And then he said, invite those, you invite those in that, that may be lame, that may be halt, that may be weary, that may have been, you know, those ones that can't come in. Amen. You go in and get them. That invitation is also a, a means for you to go and bring them in, right? Amen, amen. But who can do that, amen, and you offended, amen? That's why the church can never ascend to its full glory because, amen, too many alts are being existing are living, amen, and they're festering, amen. And what happens? You have hatred festering. You have bitterness manifesting. You have people who have just stopped talking. Some people who are just walking around and hurt. How can you serve? How can you lead effectively? And you are operating in hurt. It ain't everybody, but it's enough to stop some of these things that we should be doing. And so finally, amen, uh, Paul, amen, and I'm cutting through, amen, I'm cutting some of this off because, amen, I want peace at home, amen. Is that all right? Amen. Finally, Paul records in Galatians 6, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Yes. Sometimes, amen, even when people do you wrong, you just don't have to just... Just start forgiving them. A lot of times we waiting for people to come ask us for forgiveness. The power right rests in you too. When you forgive them, listen, it's done. It's over. It's over. If you loan them that money a year ago, they still ain't brought it, they ain't bringing it. I don't care how much they keep telling you, just forgive. Flows because God is in control. A church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m.